Hey everybody, welcome to a special tarot reading for the Venus and Mars conjunction at 19 degrees Leo. That is happening this week exact on July 13th, but that energy is going to be in play until the next Venus and Mars conjunction happening in 2022. So we're going to dive into the energies and see what this may have in store for you. So remember that these are energetic inspirations. These are energies you can use to manifest your wildest dreams. And because I'm going to be focusing in on the houses where this conjunction is happening, please watch for your rising sign first and then your sun sign. So of course, Venus is the feminine principle and she is all about love and money and, you know, what we value. And Mars, the masculine principle of action and taking action and of our desires. So when these two meet, I mean, I feel like it's about what truly matters to you. What do you truly want to take action on manifesting for yourself? And with Saturn in Aquarius opposite this Venus and Mars conjunction, there may have been a recent reevaluation that you have gone through in your life, a recent uh, growth period, a recent maturation. You know, your desires and, and what you want now may be very different, especially in this particular area of your chart, than maybe what you have wanted before. And so with Saturn opposite this energy, it's also suggesting that, you know, if we merge the heart's desires with the inspired action, the Venus and the Mars, and we get down, roll up our shirt sleeves and, you know, really put our energy behind this new desire and do the work, whatever that means for you, there could be some very nice manifestations that arise. So let's see what we have going on in each of the 12 signs. Like I said, watch for your rising first and then your sun sign. And remember to always use these energies as inspiration for your own intention setting and your own manifestation practices. All right, Aries, let's see uh, the messages for you. This energy, Venus and Mars conjunctions happening in your fifth house of love, romance, creativity, children, entrepreneurial efforts, pleasure. All right, let's see what we need to know. Aries. Oh, we have a turning in. We have a four of swords. And we have clinging to the past. Okay, so these two energies suggest to me that if you want to make a fresh start in this area of your life, it is time to really get real with yourself, turn in, meditate, and listen to yourself of how you're still holding on to something that you don't need to be holding on to anymore. So now this could really be anything. Apply the energies to your life. This past could be a past relationship, you know, a past creative project, a, a past sense of your identity in this fifth house matter. I mean, this, you know, there's something, what I am feeling is that your role has changed in some way, or you'd like to change your role and R-O-L-E, not R-O-L-L. <laughs> You're not like your, your role. You're not going to slow your role. God, no, Aries never slows his or her role. So it's not that, but your role in life. There's something here where you might have been listening to a lot of other people. And the fifth house is also our heart's desire. And there's something to let go of from the past. Let go of from the past to make way for some sort of new heart's desire that you want to manifest. So we have the magician here taking a risk and pursuing your dream. This is very, very clear. So what's interesting about this energy, Aries, notice here with this existence that it's all about you. You're sitting there on your little lily pad and you're looking out at the universe and saying, universe, I really, really want to do something new with my life. That's going to fulfill me. Before Aries, you were listening to too many other voices. These could have been voices from the past. This could have been other people with all their demands. You were not listening enough to yourself. So that's the key to using this energy, this Venus Mars in the fifth house. 
listening to yourself in terms of what you truly want to ask the universe for. The past is gone. Get rid of the last bits of the past, especially if there's something in your heart that really needs to be finally like reconciled and let go of. Um, you know, past, especially like stuff from a past relationship. What I feel is going to be serving you very well, the energies that will serve you well, is working hand in hand with the universe here, the magician, to take a risk. Here it is. Look at how you're leaping from one situation to the next and trusting that who's ever coming in is going to catch you. Whoever the universe brings that's going to be coming into your life in this fifth house area is going to catch you. And there may very well be some sort of new person coming in. Now, it doesn't have to be romantic. It could be in a creative sense, a creative partnership. Like if you're in a band and you play music on the weekend, there could be somebody new that, you know, you start, you, that comes into your band and now the band takes off. Like, you know, something like that. This could be, yes, it could be romantic. Sure. Fifth house is all that creative energy, whether it's you're, you're playing music, you're creating a novel, you're creating a new relationship, whatever it might be. And notice it's the dream here. It's the six of cups energy. So it involves you taking the risk though. I think some of you have been a little risk averse lately. So if you want some gorgeous, and look, it's the magician, some brand new existence in your life that will light up your heart space, it's going to be about taking the risk and not being afraid to make a leap, Aries. The dream is right around the corner. It's right around the corner. So use the energy. Don't let it use you. All right, Taurus, so this Venus-Mars conjunction is happening in your fourth house of home and family and roots and what nourishes you, what feeds you. So let's see what we have going on for you, how you can use these energies in your life. Let's see what we have. We have a new vision. New vision is going to be coming into view, but this is also the hanged man. And then we have a six of coins, compromise. So there is a promise to make to yourself. I'm not going to focus so much on the compromise, but I want to, you to focus on the pinky promise. See the pinky promise those two are making to themselves. So because coupled with this new vision card, I think there is something here about keeping the promise to yourself of some sort of new way you want to live the new vision for your life maybe you haven't quite made the promise yet but you're about to it may involve another person because there's two people here i mean that's possible the six of this is six of coins so there there could be you know a child involved a partner involved you know some other entity involved maybe with funding here because of the six of pentacles but I feel ultimately this is about keeping a promise to yourself to no matter how long it takes for this new beginning to manifest, you're going to hold your vision for it. This new vision for your life. And because of this is the hangman. So there could be like, you know, it may, it may take a little time for it to come into being. But that's why the promise needs to be strong and unwavering. All right, let's see. Nine of Swords, Four of Swords, and the beautiful Ace of Cups going with, the, I think that's Ace of Cups. I haven't used this deck in a while, so, and they don't have all the things on here, so. Okay, so there may have been some disappointment in a home situation or a partnership situation. Somebody moving in, moving out, not moving in, not moving out, that type of thing. Um, I do feel that energy is going to shift for you. Um, it's continually about you holding, again, look at this, turning and holding the vision, focusing on the flow and not going against the flow for the right timing of this manifestation, this change to occur and not forcing anything and keeping the faith. So 
you know, Nine of Swords, yes, in this deck, it's sorrow. And like I said, there could have been a recent disappointment in some way. But um, you're going to see the reason for that later on. You will see it. And it's not about dwelling in the disappointment and the sorrow. It's about keeping your focus on this beautiful new situation that is going to manifest for you or that you have the potential to manifest for yourself. So go with the flow, go with your own inner flow, maintain the promise that you made to yourself that, you know, you're not going to dwell on the past and what did or didn't happen. And you're going to keep yourself firmly focused on the future and not force anything, not force a timing and not force a situation that is not right for you. When everything aligns, going with the flow, when everything is like dominoes falling, like boom, 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 that is when you will see and know that your vision is manifesting. If that is not occurring, it's not about forcing, okay? So just keep holding this beautiful new vision for your life and if you haven't made that promise yet to yourself about what this new vision is, make sure you do that and spend some time in that creative visualization. Tune out the voices around you, focus on you and what you want, and watch it all start to unfold. All right? All right, Gemini. So this Venus-Mars conjunction is happening in your third house. So third house rules transportation. So if you in particular really need or would like to, if your desire is to manifest some sort of funding for a transportation source, so, you know, some sort of anywhere from a, a car, a bicycle, a motorcycle, whatever, I mean, that's very, very possible, you know, possible desire with these energies in the third house. The third house also rules communication making money from our words so something like that so let's see let's see what we have what do we need to know about that energies you can use for this third house we have the master osho zen himself and the ten of pentacles oh wow okay so I think there's going to be some energy you can tap into, something you're really, really good at that you can share with the world. In this deck, it's we are the world, that you can share with the world that, and it's the pentacles, ten of pentacles, that, that can be a possible funding source for whatever this third house, you know, manifestation intention setting, you know, whatever it is you want to attract into your world. So this is very positive. Let's pull, let's pull some more, let's pull some more cards. Let's see. We have consciousness, the miser, and mind. Okay. I feel that some of you are setting an intention to change your consciousness from one of scarcity to one of abundance. There's, there's some, and it has to do, I think, with either something you are creating and putting out into the world because of this energy. Um, you know, some, like I said, some sort of talent capability you have, particularly in communications, writing this third house area, teaching, um, I have a feeling that you can, if you put your mind to it with this master energy, you can manifest some very nice abundance for yourself. Like I said, to go toward a change in a third house area, like funding for a class you want to take, funding for marketing your business, funding for a vehicle. But here's the thing. If and when you manifest that funding, I think you there's something going on here where you may even be afraid or not want to spend the money but i feel like the universe is and especially if you're tapping into and using this energy is going to want to bring you that funding so it can fulfill your desire there's something here about you accepting and allowing the abundance to come in 
and use it for what you really want to use it for and not just be a miser and hold on to it. So, and like I said, this is also because miser is of a scarcity consciousness. It's like, oh, well, I'm never going to get any money ever again, so I don't want to spend it. Now, I'm not suggesting one should just be a frivolous spender. I'm not saying that, but this is, I mean, master, manifestation master and this ten of pentacles. And it's the world, the world, the universe wants to reward you for your mastery of whatever it is that you do. And I think there's a high potential that it will reward you. But when that reward comes in, how are you going to handle it? That's the question and the issue to think about. So I'm just here to ask the questions, as I like to say. So Gemini, think about that. This is, like I said, there's something here where you may be really um, learning a lesson. That's that Saturn opposite the energy, learning a lesson about scarcity consciousness here and not buying into that and stepping more into the natural universal flow of prosperity energy. So that's possible here with this energy. All right. So keep all of that in mind as you set your intentions. All right, Cancer. So this Venus Mars conjunction is happening in your second house of money and what you value. So there's some sort of fresh inspired energy, maybe a new project you're going to be working on, a new creative project, a new artistic project that could make some money for you. Let's see what you need to know about that energy. Let's see. Cancer. Mm, we have intensity. Look at that moving so fast. Look at all of that beautiful creative energy there. And we have courage. So for me, this is about just summoning up the courage to not wait. This is the you know, the, the conditions may not be ideal. It's not about waiting around for ideal conditions. It's about in the intensity of your desire. So, and as long as you dive into the intensity of your desire, something beautiful will manifest, All right? So look, I mean, the flower is growing up through the crack in the rocks here. There's not a lot nurturing it, but nevertheless, it persisted and it grew. So, Let's see what else we have. Let's pull some more energies. Four of Wands, participation. Five of Wands, taking a risk. And here's your creativity. I think there's something that is absolutely beautiful that may involve you participating with other people in some sort of creative project. That's possible with this Four of Wands. Um, and also because of the totality, you can see there's a trapeze this person is in tandem with other people. So this totality, taking a risk, taking a chance, knowing the other person's got you, got your back. The universe has got your back. Um, but I think it's with somebody else. There could be a, an important coach in your life, a mentor, uh, maybe a new business partner since this energy is happening in your second house, but somebody who you value and who values you. Because again, second house is values as well. And we have this beautiful creativity, empress energy. So nurturing some sort of love or, you know, project with love, really, because it's second house. So project with love, with intensity, enthusiasm. Look at all these red energies here. So root chakra, sacral chakra. Uh, this is really grounded in the essence also of who you are creatively. You're, you're just beautiful, creative energy. Um, but you're connecting with other people with this, which is great. I feel it's not a solo effort. There's somebody coming in to help you is what I am feeling. Um, and you're going to blossom. You're going to shine with this energy. This is beautiful, but the courage is here. It will require a little bit of you stepping out of a comfort zone. So, but you're going to do it because I think you're very excited about this particular project and with the Empress energy showing up here. And because this is happening in your second house of money, risk will bring reward is what I am feeling. Creative risks, creative risk taking, especially with a partner or, 
you know, maybe two other people. There's not a lot of people involved. It's a small group, small, small group of people. This could be like a creative, um, you know, workshop, a creative support group. You know, like I said, group coaching, like something like that experience that's going to help you achieve this particular um, financial goal, creative project, and help you make some money. Very nice energy. So Leo, this energy is happening in your first house of the self, what you really, really want. So your absolute heart's desire. What's, what's, what's this next new dream that you really want to manifest? Not what other people want for you, but what you want for yourself. Let's see. Let's tune in. Because with Saturn transiting through your seventh house, there could have been a lot of demands other people have been placing on you. So this cycle is really about this Venus, Mars, your goals and wishes and desires. All right, let's see. Let's see what we have for you. Leo, we have the six of cups. So we have the dream. Some of you want a relationship. I mean, ah, and the, the compromise. Wow. Two number sixes here. I was just talking about this with Taurus and the pinky promise. So, so this is what I am feeling. What I am, my intuition is whispering in my ear. Um, some of you really are setting an intention to have a relationship that doesn't break its promises that is reliable, that's steady. Okay, that's for some of you. Apply the energy to your life, of course. Um, but I'm also feeling that you don't, there's something in your life, uh, this new dream that involves not compromising. Like I said, with that Saturn in your seventh house, you've probably, lately, you've probably had to really deal with a lot of other people's stuff. And you're like, no. I have this new thing I really want to create, whether it's a romance or whatever it is here with this dream card. I don't want to have to sacrifice. I don't want to have to, to change what I really envision for myself because of, of somebody else, whatever, whatever somebody else's situation is. So let's see. This could also be, I mean, because it's the Six of Pentacles, it all also could be like, you don't want to have to compromise your dream because of finances either. So some of you want to manifest the money to have this dream happen or manifest an angel investor <laughs> to have the money come in and manifest your dream. Let's see what else we have. Oh, we have a breakthrough. I like that. We have a breakthrough. Playfulness and exhaustion. Okay, wow. 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 Leo. So interesting, these energies. I think, I think that some of you, especially if you're looking to manifest a new relationship, could be manifesting one that is going to exhaust you, but in the best of ways, if you get my drift. I'm not going to go there. It's a family friendly channel. Um, all right. So that's for some of you, um, for others of you, this compromise has exhausted you. This, these energies go together for me. And the dream that you're seeking is this playfulness, is the sparkle, is the glow, is the joy, you know, doing what you want, feeling free, feeling fun, just having fun. That's the thing with this playful. So some of you are really setting an intention to break through these demands from other people and make way more time for your own personal goals that involve joy, joyful play and creative self-expression as well. So, and there's something here also with this breakthrough, you can see it's like busting through like a wall. So, and it could be this particular situation here, all this whatever this thing is around this person, this machinery, um, these energies, it's very similar colors and feeling to this. There was a sense, I think there is because of the Saturn in the seventh house, there's been this strong sense of obligation 
that has exhausted you. And it's, and it's forced you to compromise on fulfilling something that you really want or having time to fulfill a dream you really hold dear to your heart. That's what you're going to set the intention to shift out of and break through and bust through so that you can have more of this energy, this joyful energy in your life. And the playfulness relates to whatever, whatever that means for you. All right. So you're, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. That's, that's how I say, use the energy, set the intention to not compromise anymore in a certain aspect of your life, especially if it's gotten to a point where it's exhausting you because you're nurturing a very tender dream, very, something very close to your heart. And it's about time that you manifest it. All right, Virgo. So this energy is happening in your 12th house of the subconscious of things hidden behind the scenes. This is also the energy I feel of like mining for gold, that some sort of little golden nugget can rise up from your intuition, from your subconscious. And if you take action upon it, the Mars could lead to something very rewarding for you, the Venus. All right, so let's see. Let's see what we have. Oops. All right, we have a breakthrough and we have the Six of Swords, the burden. So something that you have been trying to shift in your world, whatever it might be, there is, there's going to be some sort of lightning bolt, lightning flash epiphany that will help you move in the right direction. Right now, you're, you're like, how can I go on? I mean, look at this. I can't keep traveling in this direction trying to carry this person. So whatever this burden is, it could be carrying somebody's, somebody else's problems, helping somebody else's, you know, somebody else with their shenanigans. Um, and you're exhausted. You're exhausted. So you're going to be shifting this idea, this breakthrough, this Venus Mars, setting the intention to allow your subconscious to figure out the answer to a burdensome situation. But it's one you're carrying. I think you're carrying something of somebody else's that really should not be. But let me see what else we have. <laughs> Completion. Wow. And then you're like, all right, I'm done. <laughs> the nine of cups, laziness. Uh, and then, all right, now what do I do? Okay, the two of swords. So, very interesting. Some of you may feel like you're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. That's what this card always reminds me of with this. Like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. And I think that's why we have this, this energy that came out. Um, that's what this burden is. And that's why it's been hard to kind of figure out from your waking mind how to fix it, how to shift the energy. But remember, this Venus and Mars is happening in your 12th house, which is about the subconscious. So, and your intuition. So it's so, that's why I was chuckling with this completion card because the piece of the puzzle, the breakthrough piece of the puzzle will come from your intuition. That's where this puzzle piece is gonna go, right on the third eye. So, and even this, the six of swords is, is swords, it's mental energy. And here's the two of swords. So you're trying to shift this burden, you know, from a mental perspective and you're not finding the answer and you're not gonna find the answer. So the answer comes intuitively, the piece of the puzzle that will help you have the breakthrough of how to end the stalemate with this situation and let go of this energy. And here is the gorgeous, although in this deck, he's like, he's like he's, he's, it's called laziness, but it's the nine of cups. So the wish fulfillment to just be able to finally kick back and relax and not have this thing dogging on you and weighing you down and not allowing you to live your life. So very interesting energies here, but this is the key. And, and that's the thing too. Now, this is a general reading and everybody's intuition works differently. But if it were me in terms of working with these energies, if I was a Virgo rising, I'd be like, okay, so 
I need to really make sure that I keep a notebook by the bed. Maybe I, you know, so that when I wake up with a certain dream, the answer, the intuitive answer could be there. I am going to make sure that I listen to all my nudges and hints and intuitions because the breakthrough could be in that piece of intuitive information I'm getting. So I would make sure that I set an intention to be super aware of how I do get my intuitive information. I do get a lot through my dreams. Um, whatever way you get that, make sure you set the intention that I'm going to be making sure I write it down because we can forget very easily. I'm going to tune in, pay attention and know and trust that if you give your mind, if you give your subconscious mind a problem to solve, it will solve it. But you have to be open to the piece of information it gives you. And that's the other thing. Sometimes it will give you the piece of information. And if you try to process that piece of information through your waking mind, through your intellect, you won't understand the message. So that's another piece of this as well. It's about understanding that piece of information from an intuitive standpoint, not an intellectual one. So use the energy, Virgo. You'll get your wish finally. Pay attention to the intuitive signs, symbols, etc. All right, Libra. So this energy, Venus, Mars conjunction happening in your 11th house of hopes and wishes and dreams and friendships and networks. So let's see, setting an intention for maybe a new friendship to come in or some wish fulfilled. Let's see. What energies we have for you, Libra. All right, we have a judgment. So some sort of transformation. Oh, and a comparison. Interesting. This is five of swords. All right, this is what I'm feeling. I'm feeling like there is going to be a major, you have the potential. I mean, it's always about what you do with the energies. You have the potential to manifest an absolute beautiful transformation in your life through some sort of wish being fulfilled. The issue here is that I feel like you're comparing yourself, the five of swords, to other people and how far along they are in their lives. Whoever your peer group is, that type of thing, you're like, well, you know, I'm only here. I'm only making this amount of money or I only have this type of place I'm living, that, that type of thing. If you really want to use this energy and set an intention to manifest a very cherished wish that will transform your life and bring a new life to you, the way to use this energy is stop comparing yourself. That is very evident here. Look to yourself, judge only by your own standards for yourself, not in terms of what other what's going on around you. All right, let's pull from the top of the deck and see what else we have for you. Rebirth. Yep, Ten of Swords. For this one's been popping in quite a bit today. The four swords, not listening to other people, other voices around you, four swords and four swords here, postponement. Excuse me, this is four, four of cups and four swords and we have a 10 of swords. So why has the rebirth been postponed? Because we have a rebirth here. We have the beautiful butterfly up to this point. Whatever this wish is that you want to transform your life, why has it seemingly been postponed? Because there's been something here where, again, there was the comparison and not listening to yourself. So even this card here with the postponement, the grass is greener over here, not appreciating who she is, what's going on over here with her, but always looking outside herself rather than tuning in and appreciating who she is, what she has to offer right here, right now, and not listening to these other voices. So this rebirth can happen. Listening and dancing, dancing, that was good. Dancing to your own tune, the beat of your own drum. That's what this energy is suggesting to me. There has been this postponement and this comparison is very type similar energy here. 
that, you know, it has been the comparison that has held you back. So set the intention that you're going to listen only to yourself. You're going to maybe spend some time journaling, meditating, whatever, connecting with yourself in some significant way so that you move beyond the illusion. Here's beyond illusion, beyond the illusion of what you think other people have. It's about what you want and what you have and the changes you want to make in your own life and not worrying about how they stack up against other people's accomplishments. So I, I do. I mean, this is a gorgeous energy, this beyond illusion. There is going to be something you can transform, a fond wish that you can make happen. But that is the energy to use to manifest it for yourself. All right. So Scorpio, this energy of the Venus Mars conjunction is happening in your 10th house of career. So, and of course, status in your life as well. So there could be a change in status, like a marriage, for example. Um, and 10th house can also be your, your name and lights, some sort of fame coming to you also. So it's going to depend, of course, on your personal situation. But let's let's see what the energies are. So some sort of putting passion behind your career pursuits, taking action on maybe some sort of new project for your career. All right. What do we need to know about that energy? Let's see. Trust. Beautiful. I'm going to take a leap of faith, Scorpio, because you've up leveled your consciousness. So, I mean, you know, I love Scorpio, you know, I love you guys and you know that I have Scorpio in my chart. So this is not a diss against Scorpios, but you know how you sometimes don't do this. You don't do this trust thing. You don't do the leap of faith because you're a fixed energy. You like the control, but there's something here where, uh, like I'm saying, there's some sort of expansion in your consciousness and you are going to go for it. You are going to go for it and you're going to be flying high. All right, let's see. What else do we have? And we get the 10 of pentacles and look, the, we are the world. So, and it's the 10 and that we're talking about the 10th house here. All right. We got a, we got a stress ball over here. So let's see. And the letting go. All right. Very interesting. I feel like you're going to be letting go of some sort of stressful situation in your career life. Um, maybe it didn't bring a lot of money, but that's not the point. The point is that you're going to let go of this. This is what you're letting go of. This is what you're manifesting, this pentacles. And also more people knowing your name, more people knowing who you are in your industry, perhaps with this world card here. So there has been something also where, you know, you have maybe been working harder and not smarter. So, and you've had too many balls in the air. You can see this guy, the monkey's about to pop the balloon. This guy's going to fall on his butt. So you don't want the monkey to pop the balloon. You're going to get off the balloon before the monkey can do anything. So you're going to let go of some of these things. Here's the letting go, eight of cups that you thought you had to hold on to, to in your career life in some way, too many projects, too many clients, too many, you know, you know, et cetera. So you're going to shift that energy. And that's where the trust comes in. Because some of you may be letting go of something that's been around for a while in order to start something else. Very possible. So... You know, there could be a big change coming while this energy is in play from now until uh, we have the next one that's going to be happening on March 6th, 2022. So there could be some really just big leap of faith that you're taking. Um, some of you, just, you're just shifting jobs. That the job you were in was just too darn stressful and ridiculous. And you're moving on to do something else that's going to be much more rewarding. Some other job, not necessarily starting your own business, but some of you may decide to do that too. 
Whatever this is, the leap of faith is a risk you're going to take. But you trust in yourself and this up-leveled awakening consciousness. And it is from that. And you're doing it, I feel, with joy. With joy. Because you're tired of that other shenanigan that we looked at. And it's going to bring the pentacles for you. It's, I mean, it's right here. But also, more connections in your world. More people. More people of like mind, I feel, also, Scorpio. So... Set the intention to trust. I know sometimes, like, like I said, if you're not in this place yet, what can you do with your consciousness to get to that place? Because that, the leap of faith, is the thing that's going to propel you forward. All right, Sagittarius. So this energy is happening in your, your Mars-Venus conjunction. It's happening in your ninth house of the higher mind, of travel, new experiences, uh, International business, cultures, learning, academia, metaphysical pursuits, all of these areas, the higher mind, the higher vision, the big picture of your life. So some sort of inspiration in these areas. Let's see how you can use this energy. Make a passionate new beginning. Here's your energy. Temperance card. Integration. And letting go. All right. So interesting. So eight of cups and your energy. You probably have recent, recently come to terms with something that doesn't fit in your world anymore. Probably an emotional relationship of some kind because of the eight of cups showing up here. And you are making sense of that situation. I mean, it's integration, as it says here. So you're figuring out, all right, how do I now navigate my life, the big picture of my life, without that person, that connection, that whatever it is, that emotional sustenance of some type. So you are figuring that out. So let's see what else we have. So it's about the big, big picture of your life. We have a new vision for the big picture of your life. And this is Pisces energy. We have the mind and we have, oh, I love this card, and we have angelic guidance. So this is beautiful. <sighs> this mind card though, right? Look at, look at it. The new plan for your life, the bigger picture that wants to unfold for your life. Now that you've let go and cleaned out whatever this thing is that represents, you know, whatever it represents for you. Now that you've gotten rid of that, I think this was like maybe a block, some emotional block. It could have been a relationship holding you back in some way. Now that that's gone, let's throw that away. Now that that's gone, you can see this new vision for your life. And you can see it from a very spiritual perspective because this is Pisces energy. What's getting in the way next, so it's like you've cleared one roadblock, but here's another roadblock. Um, what's getting in the way, though, ultimately, is something of overthinking. So this new vision, this, this greater picture of your life that you want to manifest, is going to come through spiritual guidance. Look at the angel on here. Through making, well, not really making a spiritual plan, but aligning with and adhering to the spiritual plan for your life, not what you think the plan should be necessarily, what your intellect is telling you the plan should be, your intellect. So that's another thing you're going to be working through. There is, this energy here is very spiritual. It is about tuning into the guidance that you're getting from your spirit guides. It's about tuning into your own spirit, your own soul, and what you do feel is the next right unfolding of your spiritual path and purpose. This big picture perspective, this ninth house, that is the, the spiritual journey. So this is very significant for you. Um, I feel like you've, you've really, as we know from the South Node going through your sign, you really have integrated a lot of stuff. You've closed out a lot of chapters. Um, but now it's time. It's time now to start focusing on the new and what this, 
And what do you want that to look like for yourself? So I feel like the best way to use these energies is to start having some serious conversations, <laughs> Sag, with your angels, with your spirit guides, and make the plan from the spiritual perspective. However you do that, whether you pray, whether you journal, whatever way you do that, start doing it with more intention for this next target. You see that there's a little bit of an archer, it looks like to me. No, maybe not. It's just the, it looks a little archery. It looks like you here, the archer. Uh, the next goal, the next target you wanna hit, so to speak. For your life the next direction where are you going to point that arrow and mars has the arrow of desire on him as i like to say so but it's going to come through that spiritual guidance spiritually connecting with yourself and figuring that out so capricorn the mars uh, venus conjunction is happening in your eighth house the deep house of sex death transformation taxes other people's money physical mental, emotional transformation. So it's a very serious, very serious house. So let's see, see what, uh, what new intentions you might want to manifest for your transformation, transforming your energy, what you give energy to Mars, what you value Venus, how other people value you. Venus, Mars, and how do they show up in your life to value you? Like, what do they tangibly, what do they tangibly give? All right, let's see. Let's see what we have. Uh, we have the miser talking about uh, not giving anything. Well, what are they giving? They ain't giving much. Four of coins. And then the rebirth here, the ten of swords. So we are rebirthing ourselves out of a miserly situation not accepting less than from other people so that is like you know again using the energy setting the intention that because it's about other eighth house other people's resources other people's money other people's energy so if they're not giving to you then you're out of there that's that's it if, if the scales are perpetually and continually unbalanced, because Capricorn, let's face it, you know, you got the, the shoulders of Atlas, you can hold up the world, but it's not, you're not supposed to be doing that. So other people need to hold up their fair share. So there's something here that we are rebirthing out of this, setting the intention that no more miserly people in your life. No. No more miserly people in your life who are not nurturing you and giving back. That there has to be an ebb and flow of the energy because you're out of there. Look at that. And here's the Leo, the lion. You're like, you give them a little roar and then you're done. You're just going to go on your merry way. All right. What do we have here? We have creativity, maturity, and we, ooh, we have the moon. Okay. So I feel like we have another important message here for you because we have the Empress energy showing up, the maturity, and then the silence of the moon. I feel like, you know, eighth house is, as I said, transformation, profound transformation. And I think that there is likely to be some sort of creation coming into your life whether this is a little a literal person or a business project or something that is arriving in absolute divine timing because of the maturity card here. It's like you were not ready for it before. There's something about you're ready for it now. It wants to manifest. You're going to be working on it, nurturing it to manifest. You're excited about it. Ah, uh, but here's the silence. There is something about the full cycle of this to take place. So, and you will be working on it quietly behind the scenes. Interesting, Pisces energy, excuse me, is showing up here. The next Venus-Mars conjunction will be happening in Pisces season. So, and it's cyclical. So I think what this is, 
Flowers mature at the exact right moment they're supposed to mature. You cannot rush it. Same thing, right? The moon matures, the full moon, on its cycle. You can't rush the moon. It has its cycle. So this project, this transformative situation that you were working on, you can't rush it. It has its natural timetable. And you need to be quiet about it behind the scenes. That's very Pluto. That's very eighth house. Very behind the hush hush behind the scenes. So that's another important message. I think it will come to maturity. Maturity next March when we have that next Venus Mars conjunction in your second house of money. <laughs> So Capricorn, very interesting energies. Uh, keep silent about that project. Also, make sure you take on board this message, right? Anybody not on board with nurturing you in the way that they should, done. Let them go. You don't need it. You're done with that. You learned a lot of lessons about that. And you don't need that in your life anymore. So get rid of it. So Aquarius, this Venus-Mars conjunction is happening in your relationship house, the seventh house. Uh, it is also about business partnerships. It's really, let's, let's look at it as in, in terms of connections, heartfelt connections, new connections coming into your world, new people who, you know, you can build loving connections with in some way, maybe in business, Venus, right? Love or money connections, taking action to bring new and worthwhile people into your life. All right, so let's see what we need to know about that. Setting the intentions to manifest that. All right, what you need to know, Aquarius. All right, Capricorn just got this silence. And I mean, I did shuffle and Thunderbolt. Wow. Wow. So the tower. You may have the, the calm stillness of your life will be dramatically transformed. I think it's very possible from now until the next I mean, as Mars conjunction next next March that there's there's somebody who comes into your world quite suddenly, unexpectedly. Now, in you know, the French call this the coup de foudre, the, the tower, which is the lightning bolt, like love at first sight. That's possible. Sure. Uh, we got to pull some more cards. But what I am really feeling is allow yourself to be pleasantly surprised. Allow your world to be rattled, to be changed, to be transformed. Something's because <laughs> something's going to shatter the silence. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so dramatic. All right, let's see. Let's see what we have. Oh, wow. Busting through awareness, which is the chariot card. This card has been coming up so much and I shuffled the new vision. Wow, that's the Pisces energy. And the aloneness. Oh my gosh. Look at these energies. Every single one is a major arcana. Aquarius. Your aloneness, if you so choose it to be, whatever it is, you could be feeling alone in business. You would love to have somebody you could, you know, shoot the breeze with in your business life. If you've been feeling just you want some more friends in your life, if you've been feeling cut off from people, if you want a significant other, this is the time. This is the time to set the intention to allow these surprise connections to come in. No more silent aloneness. Now, it is going to require you seeing a new vision, visualizing these connections that you want to come in, you know, allowing, making the space, seeing yourself in that space with those people. Um, now, what's interesting here is the chariot and the awareness. So there has been like this gauze over your vision. There has been something that you have not seen about your own aloneness before. So I would use the energy of this Venus Mars conjunction to tune in with myself and see, yeah, have I just been kind of in a comfort zone? 
Have I just been allowing myself to only imagine my life from this perspective? I haven't allowed myself to visualize a change. And, you know, I just haven't gone there. So that's something to look at. I feel like a veil is going to be lifted from from in front of your face. You know, you can see this is like, you know, and behind this, look at it's so cute. It's like the inner child almost like behind here. So this innocent inner child that still like believes in heart centered connections, in love, in camaraderie, in friendship. That's going to come out for you. That, that, that little inner child and his or her desires going to come out. You're going to start seeing your life from that vantage point again. And I really feel it's because you're waking up to the fact that you don't want to be alone anymore or as alone. There's nothing wrong with being alone. Of course not, you know, especially, you know, for introverts. We like our alone time. We like being able to just kick back and do our thing. But even introverts have friends, even introverts have relationships. So some of you, you're going to see like, yeah, I want to bring, I want to bring some people into my life. doesn't have to be 24 seven, but I don't want to be so alone. So there's going to be some surprising connections. If you're willing to see that in your world, that's remember, I always say, use the energies. So set the intention that you will allow your vision, your new vision for your life to have people in it, maybe even a significant other. So Pisces, the Venus Mars conjunction is happening in your sixth house of work and well-being. So let's see how you can use those energies. So you might be really setting an intention to manifest a new job. Uh, to heal yourself in some way. So this would be a good time to maybe get diet under control with the, the Venus, you know, Venus loves her sweets. So maybe, you know, taking, getting back to the gym and cutting back on the sweets, you know, the Mars, the, you know, taking action. So it could be something like that. Um, but it also could be setting the intention to manifest some new source of income. All right, so let's see what we have for you. Pisces. <laughs> I shuffle. We got the Thunderbolt. Aquarius just got this and I shuffled and we have the Fool. So some surprising, if you set the intention that you are open to a surprising new beginning in your work and career life, that you will take a risk <laughs> it looks like the guy's gonna like fall off the cliff but you know the cliff could just be down here there could be a little mattress we don't see uh, you know off you know the edge of the card here um i think they're gonna look these two major arcanas set the intention you're open to the surprise of a new beginning in your work or well-being and that you're you're ready you're ready for it and not overthink it and Fly the coop, escape the cage here and share your gifts in a new way. You're going to be sharing your gifts in a new way is what I am feeling. This is what I feel, Pisces. There's something here. And also, if you're working on well-being, it's going to be about sharing the experience with other people. So I suggest uh, like a coach, a dietitian, a nutritionist, uh, exercise classes, not doing it all on your own. A, you know, a trainer, like that type of thing. Um, it's going to be important for you to share your gifts, share an experience with people. Um, okay, so I think it's very possible an inspired new beginning, set the intention and stop overthinking it. There's something here, you're holding yourself back from freedom in some way because of your own I mean, this is short circuiting. Look at this person. Like they're, your thoughts are, sh bleh, bleh, bleh. thoughts are short circuiting your brain. And that's not how this is going to work. It's going to work from being, feeling free and open and inspired and tuned into opportunity when lightning strikes, when the opportunity strikes and 
We know that that happens out of the blue and our intuition, especially your intuition, often alerts you to that fact. It's not about, you know, trying to engineer it here. So, you know, it's interesting. We have like a leap of faith here. We have the bird flying out of the cage. So you're going to understand intuitively the exact right moment for your escape from a situation. I mean, this could even be, if we're talking about job, you know, some job that really has just caused a lot of mental stress with this. You're going to see the opportunity and you're going to know the right timing of when to fly, and when to fly the coop. And here's with the sharing. There's something here about really emphasizing how you can share your gifts and make somebody's situation better that's what's gonna get you that next opportunity for a job like i'm particularly looking at a job situation here um so and i think you are you're going to be sharing your gifts in some sort of new way that you weren't able to before maybe they were holding you back in that in that position um and they weren't allowing you the full and free expression of your talents and capabilities but and that's why the freedom aspect is so important. You're going to be free to do that. So beautiful. This is beautiful, fresh start energy. And I mean, both of the, the, just the freedom aspect is what I'm really feeling here. Inspired freedom. Um, wherever you're going, they're going to, they're going to encourage your talents in a way that they haven't been encouraged before or at least to that extent. I feel like somebody's also really kind of kept you in a mental, it's like in a mental box as well. Like you may have had a lot of good ideas, you tried to share them and they were like, no, nah, we don't want to hear it. Like go back in your cubicle and go do that over there. You know, so beautiful energies here, Pisces. Set your intention that you're open to opportunity when it strikes. So thank you so much for joining me for this special tarot reading Venus Mars conjunction in Leo. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you plan to use these energies to manifest your wildest dreams. I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care and I will see you again soon. Stella Wild signing out.